God always prepares the people for the events that are just about to happen. Now, in preparation, God always prepares before he does anything. How could we? As it is spoken in the Bible, before we go to fight a war, we first have to prepare for that war. If you're going to get married, you prepare for that time and make preparations. And before you come to church, you make preparations, like arranging for an ambulance to bring you or your loved one, or ensuring you have a certain amount of money ready before you can come. God always prepares the people for the events that are just about to happen. Let me pause here for a moment and say, I believe that people are in the preparation mode for the last great destruction. This world will ever know. I believe we're at the end. Warnings are everywhere on television, radio, newspapers, and social media. People are being warned. We are being warned. Maybe you have tried to speak to people and warn them. But they still drink their whiskey, wine, and smoke cigarettes and laugh at you. They are in the spirit of the last days. And God cannot send destruction before the people are in the spirit for destruction. God never destroys anything. Man always destroys himself, just like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. In the garden, there were two trees. One was life, and one was knowledge. Man left the tree of life to eat from the tree of knowledge, and with the first bite, he separated himself from God. Every time a man bites off of that tree of knowledge, he destroys himself. He bit off gunpowder and killed his comrade. He bit off automobiles from the tree of knowledge, resulting in more deaths than all the wars combined. Now, he has bitten off a hydrogen bomb. What will he do with that? Everything, he destroys himself by knowledge, and knowledge always reaches a limit and falls back. But the tree of life is endless and leads to glory. Don't depend on your knowledge and never try to figure out anything. That God says, if you could figure it out, or I could figure it out, or any other preacher could figure it out, we would be equal with God. We are not supposed to. And we'll never be able to figure it out because when we can figure it out, it's no longer faith. We must accept it by faith because God said so. I don't know how, and I can't tell you how he's going to do it but he's gonna do it because he promised to do it, because he promised to do it. That's the basis. God is gonna do it because he promised to do it. He's God and he can't break his promise. Some of God's preparations have seemed ridiculous to people who rely on the tree of knowledge. God's preparations have been absolutely ridiculous to the natural mind because the natural mind cannot conceive the things that are of God. They are foolishness to him and he thinks it's horrible to even consider them. In the beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned, man has always tried to prepare himself. Oh yes, he tries to prepare himself. Oh yes, he tries to prepare himself. When he first sinned, the first thing he did was to go out and prepare himself an apron of fig leaves and wrapped it around him. He was making himself. Now, the word religion means covering. Adam and Eve made themselves a religion, a covering. But when God called them and they had to stand face to face with God, they realized that their man made religion was no good. So the best thing to do is to make preparations for his second coming right now and get right with God. Now, I noticed that Eve wrapped herself up in some fig leaves and Adam did too. But when it came time to face God, they were condemned. They realized that their man made religion wouldn't work when God called them. And they were exposed and felt shame. It is true, even today. When God had prepared himself to speak to Adam, Adam, in a man, made way, was trying to prepare himself to speak to God. But God had to prepare Adam to speak to him. So... In order to do that, 
they began to pass the buck to one another, as the old street expression goes. And then what happened? God went out and got some skins and made aprons for them. Let me tell you who I think God is, just for a minute. Let's take a little mental trip together. Let's go back to before there even was a star in the heavens, before there was anything. Settled way back in eternity, there was God. And then, unfolding himself, came the Logos, which was the Son of God, or the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, the Logos. Now, Let's observe as God unfolds himself. Then, in Genesis, he said, let us make man in our own image. What kind of man was he? He had to be a spiritual man. And then he put him in a body with five senses to interact with his earthly home. He might have given him a foot like a bear and a hand like a monkey. I don't know what he did, but those five senses were not for him to connect with his maker. He knew his maker by faith, and it was his soul that made that connection. But his body here couldn't connect because it's just the senses. These senses were given for earthly uses, seeing, tasting, feeling, smelling, and hearing. As I proved to you the other night, seeing and hearing and so forth is not believing. Far from it. But notice in this earthly home, they had sin. When God came down, he said, because you listened to your wife, instead of God, I took you from the dust, and to dust you shall return. And woman, because you listened to the serpent, instead of your husband, you brought death into the world, and you'll bring life into the world, and multiply your sorrows, and so forth. And to the serpent, dust shall be your food, I can envision Adam standing there, and Eve. I believe, I believe Eve, not like some artists paint her as a horrible-looking brute, but as the most beautiful woman the world had ever known. And if I had time to go into it, I could prove that from the scriptures. She was lovely when Adam woke up that morning and saw that beautiful woman, flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. He took her by the arm and they walked down through Aden. What a beautiful home. No sickness, no sorrow, nothing but the prospect of living together forever. Dear friends, this is not the time to play around. It's time to be serious with the word of God. Let get prepared God always, and will always give us to time. Prepare ourselves. So see that you are preparing yourself for the great event to happen. God be with you as you get ready for his second coming.